Okay. Uh, so I'm just in a stock Rails app. It's the 3.1 app. Um, I think it only runs on 3.1 and up because that's like the asset pipeline stuff. Um, I think 187 to 193 basically. Um, so just in a stock app. So I just installed Rails themes by just doing it on the command line. And then I have my server running in, on port 3010. So there's nothing there currently. Um, but then when I do, let's see. So if I if I do I, I got my promo code or I got my download code because I um, you know basically bought it on this website. So it downloads the theme and let's see. So it does does a bunch of stuff. And then it kind of says, hey, here are all the things that you need. You need you need to make sure you have certain things going. And then there's certain URLs that you can use. Obviously, it's not using the right port in this case, but I don't know how to make that any better at this point. Um, so then it, op it popped open some like documentation for us basically. Um, so this is kind of like the, here are the color schemes of this, of this theme, and here's how you can change it. So basically there's a bunch of like SAS variables and whatnot. Normally, like if you just get a stock theme kind of thing, you're going to have to be like going around and trying to find what is this color and how do I change it and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then it talks about what gems does it have and um, kind of where, where do these things actually live? Like how do you, how would you modify them in your, in your website basically? Um, I think we're using document up for this. Um, I don't know how it's. So this is basically a way to, if you send it um, like a markdown file, it'll basically convert that into a nice looking um, kind of thing. So that was pretty, pretty interesting, I thought. I think uh, Eliza did more th with this. Um, so anyway, uh, I think we're using Sprintly as well. So that's kind of, I don't know, have you guys used Sprintly, anybody? It's like a kind of an alternate um, it's like an alternate uh, pivotal tracker-ish kind of thing. So it's just a way of managing your thing. So it's like, here's how, you know, you have basically your backlog, your current complete. This is like the dashboard view, and so you can see like what is the general velocity going, and here are all the different things that I have basically. So th there's a pretty good backlog of things that we need to do or want to do. But um, what are the advantages of sprint me over pivotal tracker? I don't know. I honestly don't it's care. It's free. free. <laughs> it's not free. It's nine dollars per user per month for their beta. So nine nine zero nine period zero okay. zero. If you want a currently free Trello, is not too bad. Trello is a very good site. Yeah, I like that. Whatever they start charging for. Yeah. It's more abstract. Yeah. Less specific. It really. Yeah. It's not really meant for the last year. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. It helps when you have people. Yeah. Yes, Trello requires a lot of team training. I thought right. I thought one thing that's uh, click on <laughs> one thing that's kind of cool with uh, Sprintly is if you say admin, it'll put the N there. Did you see that? Yeah. Hmm. They did a lot with the UI. I don't know. It's kind of cool. I wish for a Rails and But is it worth the extra money, or you know, better than yeah. <laughs> significantly better than Pivotal? Like I don't know. I think Pivotal is pretty easy to use, or maybe I'm just used to using it, so it's uh, you know, might be good. I like the. Uh, Giant robots smashing robots people. Okay. They have a project called Trajectory at Trajectory.com. Uh, yes. App Trajectory. And it's another interesting uh, backlog management tool. That's cool. Always so bad. We're in a, we're a data center and, <laughs> and you get on the Wi-Fi here. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> dial up for 1990. Nice. All right, so then uh, I, so I installed that, and then I just go to this page, and basically this is a demo of what does my landing page look like, um, you know, and what does kind of the markup look like for that and stuff. Um, so I can, like, you know, you're talking about the responsive design and stuff, so as I'm making this smaller, you know, it kind of zooms to be a more mobile kind of size. Um, let's see. And then I think there's another one. See inner. So this would be a normal like kind of inner page of your website. It looks pretty simple. Almost looks like a WordPress kind of thing. But you know we're, we're hoping it's going to be something like uh, you know Twitter Bootstrap like functionality where you have all these buttons. You have different kind of things like that. Um, 
So it's just a matter of time. And getting it doesn't look like everybody else's. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's definitely it. You know, I think that's one of the benefits is like I feel like there's a lot of things out there. And so this kind of starting to get along that way with the jQuery UI stuff. So like there's, you know, different accordions. There's all kind of, uh, you know, buttons and whatnot. So. Any reason you're not using Bootstrap? Um, I think we wanted to, I don't know. I think there was a reason. I don't know what that reason is. I don't know. I think that's part of it, but I'll, but it's a good framework. On the other hand, I think there is a there is some consideration to do we want to eventually build on that as a base kind of thing to say like yeah. take your old Twitter Bootstrap site and immediately convert it to a better looking or different looking theme. You know, that might be cool be. for a lot of companies that have gone down this road. And yeah, want to kind of like start to feel trapped or like me too's or whatever. Yeah, It'd be nice to have something we could just kind of snap into the bottom and just switch stuff out. Yeah, exactly. So. Now, I don't know if I missed it. Does this um, create the layouts files? Um, let's see. Asset pipeline? Uh, I think so. So I think it did. Yeah. So it creates this, and this is. Uh, I guess my current app is like eight. It looks like it's ERB. I have it to be a random color every time I open Vim, so it's kind of a surprise. And like sometimes it looks terrible, but like sometimes <laughs> it like, oh, that this is a nice one. Um, <laughs> let's see. So yeah, it looks like it's sat, SAS and ERB. So, and then if I had other gems and whatnot, it would probably install those extra things as well. So is there a standard um, like partial like the content four box? Do you have a standard for the whole theme package for all of them, or is it very um, I think it's it's fairly standard. It's kind of like a footer, header, that sort of thing, and um, so yeah. Can you mix the themes together? You want a footer from one and? I don't think so. At least not now. Are you buying them one at a time? Or yeah. Is it a subscription. Yeah, one at a time. I think I think Woo Themes or something has a subscription, which I think we might want to go to at some point, which would be kind of cool. I think. Can you scope a theme? Like, what does that mean? Like, say you have a subdomain and you want to use one theme and a main site and you want to use the other, but it's all in the same map, so you can mm -hmm. almost namespace it like you namespace controllers. I think probably you would probably just use a different layout depending on where you were going, I guess would be my guess. Controller. So, I yeah. guess your assets are grouped within a theme name. Yeah. Not just output by the part. Let's see. So, a lot of times it'll be like. So, some of the things are namespaced. Um, some of the things things are just basically in there, and then kind of override the application CSS and just do that kind of thing. So, which another thing is like kind of some of the asset asset pipeline stuff is not very like easy to do. So this is another like if you get this, then it like starts you off at least uh, like okay here's a generally this is working and it might be done with like best practices. You know if we're starting to learn more about this and stuff, so that's kind of a nice uh, bonus I think as well. And does it. Like I know if you have the IE.CSS, does it do like the added precompiler? I don't know. I think that was one of my question marks that I had. So. Is it in the backlog? I don't. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to check that out. <laughs> it was fun. All right. So yeah, that's about it. So anyway, um, thanks for listening to that. I appreciate the questions as well. Thanks. 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 Thanks.